hello. Welcome to Rainbow. We've got lots of shows for you to see. Look, with Bungle, George, Zippy, or well, me as well, of course, and some songs from Rod, Jane and Freddie. So let's not waste any more time, shall we? Let's have a look at the first one. It's called Mystery Bag. Now, see if you can guess what's inside it. the streets and houses rainbow climbing high everyone can see it smiling over the sky paint the whole world with a rainbow oh hello there can you see this little bag i've got here it's all lumpy and bumpy when you touch it and it keeps changing shape i wonder what's inside it Look, look, Jeffrey, it's our little froggy bean bag. It's all ready to jump. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Oh, yes, he keeps changing shape, doesn't he, Jeffy? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wonder what that is. What a funny shape. It's all lumpy. Oh, oh, there's something moving inside. I wonder what it is. It doesn't smell of anything. I wonder what it can be. Do you know what it can be? Jeffy, what, what, what's all this stuff for? Yes, yeah, 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 what are you doing, Jeffrey? Ah, uh -huh, you have to wait Jeffrey, and see. Come quickly, there's something what? funny in the garden. Something? What are you on about, Bungle? What do you mean? Well, there's a big brown bag and it's all lumpy, Jeffrey. And when I, when I poked it, it moved. Yeah. Oh, don't be silly, Bungle. A bag can't move. But it did, Jeffrey, it did. Well, did you see this bag moving? Bring it in, Boggle Boggs, and let's all have a look at the bag. Oh, well, will you get it, Geoffrey? Because I'd rather not touch it. Why not? Well, because it's round and soft. No, it was square and... Uh, well, it's very funny. <laughs> not frightened, are you, Bungle? Uh, me? Yes, yeah, no. Well, don't no, worry. It's, it's all right, Bungle. I'll go and get it, shall I? Oh, thank you very much, Geoffrey. Boggle Boggle, did the bag smell of anything? Well, I don't think so, Zippy, because I had a good sniff at it. Okay. Oh, but was it soft or hard when you touched it? Or, or was it rough or smooth? It was all lumpy, George. Oh, well, what shape was it, Bungle? Well, it was round and it was soft. No, it wasn't. It was square. And... Yeah. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, it sounds like a funny sort of bag to me. <gasps> oh, it sounds like a sort of mystery bag to me. Surprises, you never know just what you'll find. Look in and see, just watch me. Together we'll solve the mystery. Mystery. 
Together we'll solve the mystery Is this the bag you were talking about? Yes, that's it, Jeffrey. What do you think's inside it? Well, it's a bag that's full of lovely uh, big. Uh, 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 it's alive, wiggling, wiggling all over the place. I, I think it's a snake. Now, Josh, Josh, don't worry. Of course, it's not a snake. Now, come on. Uh, uh, Jeffrey, uh, give me a feel, Jeffrey. All right. Bring it over Mind here. Mind your heads. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. there we are. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, it's not one single thing. It's a lot of different things. I mean, it's a lot of different things with the same shape. Yes, quite right, Zippy. Well, whatever it is, must be as light as a feather. Oh, that's what it is. It's a bag of feathers. Well, I hope it is anyway. Well, do you think it's a bag that's full of feathers? Do, do, do you know, I think Bungle's right. It's full of feathers. <laughs> Since when have feathers been round? Oh, well, it's funny you should say that, because when I was little... Now, I listen, you two, the only way to find out is to open the bag, isn't it? This mystery bag. Oh, and find dear. out just what's inside. <sighs> That was fun, wasn't it, Jeff? Yes, it was, George. And look, here's something else that's a lot of fun. It's something um, that you could try at home, you know. It's called a mystery lucky dip. Ooh. Now, all you want is a strong paper carrier bag or a shopping bag like this one. You mean, Jeffrey, what is a lucky dip? Well, a lucky dip, George, is another kind of mystery bag, really. Ooh. Now, what you do, you fill your bag with some bits of old newspaper or paper packing. You see, like that. And then you get some little presents like these down here. See, I've got a little musical instrument oh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, a pencil there. Oh. What you do, you wrap your little presents in some tissue paper like this Ooh. and then just pop them into the bag and try and hide them amongst all the newspaper and bits of paper packing. Yeah. And then everybody takes it in turn to close their eyes and dip their hands into the bag. And if you find a present, you can keep it. Oh, oh let, let me, me try, Jeffrey. Yes, I, I Come want on, to me. All right, don't be so impatient. I've not finished all the packing yet. Oh. Well, whilst I'm doing that, let's find out what's happening in Cockleshell Bay today, shall we? One day, Robin and Rosie were walking out of the kitchen when they suddenly noticed a mysterious bag on the table. What is it? asked Robin. I don't know, said Rosie. Well, let's open it, they both said. Well, they were just about to open the bag when Gran Rowdy arrived. Oh, uh, Gran, we were just wondering. Uh, what's in this bag? Oh, that. That's Mr Ship's mystery bag. He's calling for it soon. And it's not to be touched. Oh, said Robin and Rosie. Gran, couldn't we take the bag to Mr. Ship, said Robin. To save his legs, added Rosie. I suppose you could, laughed Gran, but mind you get it to him safely. But Robin and Rosie were already on their way. Mr. Ship, they called, we brought you your, your, your mystery bag. All that, said the old sailor. Well, aren't you going to open it? said Robin. 
Oh, no, not yet, replied Mr. Ship. When? asked Rosie. Soon? Oh, bless my barnacles. You best come with me. And he took Robin and Rosie over to Fury's stable. When they got there, he said, Right, you two, now cover your eyes and no peeping. So Robin and Rosie covered their eyes. Oh, hurry up, Mr. Ship. We can't wait to know what it is, they said. All right then, my dears, you can open your eyes now. Robin and Rosie both laughed when they uncovered their eyes because they found that what had been a mystery to them was a straw hat for Fury to protect him from the sun. Surprises, you never know just what you'll find. Look in and see, just watch me. Together we'll solve the mystery. What you find, look in and see, just watch me, together we'll solve the mystery. you find look in and see just watch me together we'll solve the mystery Right then, who's going to play Mystery Lucky Dip? Oh, yeah, me, 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 me. Right. Yes, We've been yes. taking it in turns, haven't we? So yes. let's choose who's going to go first. Right. So it's Tinker, oh. Taylor, Soldier, Taylor, Taylor, Rich Man, Poor Man, <laughs> Beggar Man, Thief. Oh, oh. oh you T spells out. Oh, oh hey. 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 Right. Let's have a go here. Um, well, can you feel oh. something? What's it oh. like? Well, it's sort of, something. sort of solid and hard and bent. And What's it going to be? I don't know. Let's get the paper off now. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> right, this one. Tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor, rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. Oh, 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 and don't forget, next time you have a party, make a little mystery lucky dip. Now we've got something really exciting for you. It's all about pirates. Arr! Hello. I've been looking through our dressing up box today and found all these clothes, so I'm pretending to be a pirate. Oh, is that what pirates look like, Geoffrey? <laughs> like you? Yes, Bungle. And look, sometimes they wore an eye patch. This is an eye patch. Bring it over your head and you cover one eye like that. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey, can I wear it, please? Yes, of course you can, Zippy. Oh, oh thank you, yeah. I'll put it on for you. Oh, yeah, yes, please. There you go. 
Oh, Sacky Jeffrey, can I have another one for the other eye, Jeffrey? <laughs> oh, don't be silly, Zippy. If you wore two, you wouldn't be able to see, would you? Oh, no, <laughs> no you wouldn't, Zippy. <laughs> oh, Jeffrey, sometimes pirates used to have swords to fight with, didn't they? Yes, that's right, Bungle. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, we've got some paper here, so if I roll it up quickly like this. There we are. You've got your own pirate sword. Oh, yes, that's oh. a lovely sword. Jeffrey, <laughs> 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 what about a map? Because pirates always had maps to help them find buried treasure. Yeah. Oh, well, look, I'll draw the map. No. There's an island with trees on. And this is the sea all around the island. Oh, that's good, that bungle. Well, it looks like the pond and island in our park. That's a very good island. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, what, 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 what shall we call it? Oh, yes, we can call, uh, call it Z Zombo. Uh, no, no well, wait, I've got uh, it, I've got it. I know, I know. Let's call it Rainbow Island. Oh, yes, Rainbow, Rainbow Island. Island. That's a good idea. Yeah. Now, look, I'm going to put a cross on the island. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I know what that cross means. Yeah. Well, do you know what the cross means? Yes, that's right. That's where the treasure is buried. Yeah, that's right, where the treasure's buried. Oh, buried treasure. What sort of treasure, Zippy? We'll have to yeah. wait and find out, George. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, now, look, we've got a map, Jeffrey, so let's pretend to be pirates. Uh, you, Jeffrey, can be... Uh, OK, Long John Jeffrey. Ha-ha, <laughs> Jim <laughs> lad! Uh, yeah. uh, and George, George can be a parrot. Oh, good, another pirate. <laughs> not, 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 not a pi pirate, George, no, a, a parrot. Oh, parrot! <laughs> Yes, George, a parrot. I mean, pirates always had a parrot, and the parrot always said, pieces of eight, pieces of eight. So uh, start practising, George. Now then, what can we find for George the parrot? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, Zippy, what about Bungle? What can he be? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, you, Bungle, are oh, Ben Gunn, a poor old man who was lost on the island a long time ago. Oh, Ben Gunn Bungle. I'm sure that's a very important part. Yeah, well, yes, I think it's an important part. <laughs> right, are we ready, Zippy? Yeah. Now then, Ben Gunn Bungle, are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> I think uh, Long John Jeffrey the Pirate's ready too. Now, Long John the Pirate only had one leg, so... I'm going to have to pretend that I've only got one leg yeah. and use this broom as the crutch, see, like this. Oh, George, now you need your hat, don't you? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, for the parrot. Let's put your parrot's hat on. Yeah, yeah, pe there pe we are. Pe right, Zippy, let's start the story. Right, uh, once upon a time, a brave pirate called Long John Jeffrey and his parrot, called George, pieces of eight, found an old map and went to look for buried treasure. They sailed away in a boat. Yo ho ho and a bottle of ginger beer. Yo ho ho. <laughs> Here, shipmates, I hope we're on the right way to Rainbow Island. Pieces of eight, pieces of eight, pieces. Jeffrey, why do I have to keep saying pieces of eight? Well, because, George, a piece of eight was a gold coin with a number eight on it. Ooh. And pirates used to steal them from other ships. And because the pirates were always talking about pieces of eight, their parrots used to copy them by saying, pieces of eight, pieces of eight. <laughs> pieces of eight, pieces of eight. <laughs> oh, is that a telescope, Long John Jeffrey? Aye, that'd be right, parrot George. <laughs> well, no, actually, George, it's the inside of a kitchen roll. Ooh. Shiver me timber, shipmate. What be that I see down there? Ooh, pieces of eight, pieces of eight. No, not pieces of eight, shipmate. Tis a bottle, a plastic bottle, with a message inside. Ooh, read it, read it. Pieces of eight, pieces of eight. Ooh. He who reads this note from me, please find the island in the sea. They left me here and home did go. Signed, Ben Gunn Bungle, 
Long ago. Ooh. Here, shipmate, tis a letter from someone called Ben Gun Bungle, and he's lost. So we must find the island and rescue him. So Long John Jeffrey and his parrot George sailed on, looking for the island with poor Ben Gun Bungle on it, who wanted to go home. be rescued from this island. Oh, is that a ship I, I see? Oh, help! 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 <laughs> oh, it's no use. They can't see me. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Squeeze me spinnakers, shipmate! Oh. I can see somebody waving on that island. Come along, Parrot George. Let's go and find out who it is. Pieces of aid, pieces of aid. And so on they sailed. When all of a sudden a storm started and shook Long John Jeffrey's boat about. Hold oh. tight, shipmate! Oh. To the storm brewing! Pieces of eight, pieces of eight, pieces of... Oh, oh, I feel seasick, Jeffrey. Oh, oh. Don't you worry, Parrot George. The storm will soon be over. Oh, oh. oh look, Parrot George, the sun's coming out again. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, thank goodness that the storm's over, Long John Jeffrey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look. There's the island with a rainbow over it. It must be the Rainbow Island. Well, fish me fingers, spunk me soul. I can hear singing. The singing that they could hear coming from the island was the island singers called Pineapple Polly, Coconut Charlie, and Freddy the Fruit. Really, it was Jane, Rod, and Freddy. Welcome to our island This is Rainbow Island Where the palm trees sway And the monkeys play Where the singers on the island Lovely Rainbow Island We'll welcome you this is what we'll say. Kawaka waka hula hula. Nakawaka Nagasaki. Portaloo in Honolulu. Hawaii by Mo. Hokey Kokey Ohalo. I sure I heard somebody, shipmates. Come on, let's go and see who it is. <laughs> I heard singing, but there's no one there. Oh, Parrot George, are you feeling shipmate better? <laughs> oh, yes, thank you, Long John Jeffy. Pieces of aid, pieces of aid. <laughs> oh. Welcome to oh, Rainbow Island. Oh, welcome. Oh. Basil, my ah. brushes. <laughs> Turn with me frogs. <laughs> I be Long John Jeffrey the pirate. <laughs> this here be my parrot, George. Yes, yes. Oh. Uh, hello. I mean, pieces of eight, pieces of eight. We've come to look for the buried treasure. And to find Ben Gun Bungle. There is no oh. one else on the island. We're the island singers. There is no one else here. And I don't think there's any treasure either. But this is Rainbow Island, shipmates, isn't it? Yes, yes. Long John Jeffrey. Well, look here, shipmates. I got here a map. The, the map. map! And the cross on the island is where the treasure be hid. Ah, oh, well, come on. We shall search for the treasure and find a big gun bundle. Yeah. Yes. Wait. 
Look at the footprints in the sand. Ooh, pieces of eight, pieces of eight. They go behind those trees. Come on, shipmates, let's follow them. Oh, pieces of eight, pieces of eight. Oh, I'm sure I heard voices, but there's no one here. Pieces of eight, pieces of eight. What's that noise? Hello? Is anybody there? Pieces of eight, pieces of eight. Oh, there's a parrot. Hello, I'm Ben Gun Bungle. Who are you? Uh, hello, Ben Gun Bungle. I'm Long John Jeffrey's parrot. Everyone's looking for you. They went that way. Oh, which way? That way. Oh, thank you. Waka naka naka. Oh, oh, oh nice no, no, to see you anywhere. Oh, no, you see, Long oh. John Jeffrey. There is no one here. Pieces of eight, pieces of eight. I've just seen Bengum Bungle. Where? Here. Here oh. I am. Oh, why, thank goodness we found you, Bengum Bungle. But tell me, what are you doing here? I was shipwrecked here a long, 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 a long, 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 long time ago. That's right. But I want to go home now. Oh, we'll go home, shipmate, as soon as we find that treasure. Treasure? What treasure? Look, Ben Gun Bungle, Long John Jeffrey has a map. That's right, shipmate. Here we are, the map. Yes, yes. yes. the oh, map. map. And the cross is where the treasure be hid. Oh, oh, I know where that is. Where? where? Behind those trees over there. Lead on. Yeah. Come on, oh. shipmate. Oh. 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 Pieces of eight, pieces of eight. Oh, good. Yes, <laughs> look, look, there's a box buried in the sand. Open it, Ben oh. Bungle, open it. Oh. 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 Pieces of treasure, pieces oh. of treasure. <laughs> oh! oh. Look, it's full of rainbow badges. Oh. We can take them home with us. Into the boat, shipmates, and we'll head for home. <laughs> oh, Long John Jeffrey, let's give a rainbow badge to the Rainbow Island singers. Good idea, oh. boy. Oh. Thank oh. you, thank you. you. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm one for you. Thank you. Oh. Can we go home to Zippy now, Jeffrey? Right, old Ben Gum Bungle. <laughs> Thank you, shipmates. Thank you, musical islanders. <laughs> Come on then, Parrot George, into the boat. Oh. Right, oh. old Long John Jeffrey. Oh. Pieces of eight. Pieces of eight. Goodbye, Goodbye. Long John Jeffrey. Goodbye. Safe Goodbye. journey home. Farewell. Come back soon. Pieces of eight. Pieces of eight. And so, brave Long John Jeffrey and his parrot George and Ben Gun Bungle sailed safely home. And that's the end of the story of the pirates and the buried treasure. It's time to go now, I'm afraid. Listen, why don't you make up your little story about being pirates? You could dress up like Ben Gum Bungle or Long John Jeffrey. Take care, bye. Goodbye, bye. Bye. Pieces of eight. Pieces of eight. <laughs> Poor George the parrot. Oh, what about Bungle in a grass skirt going around like this? Wasn't he funny? <laughs> now then, let's see what we've got next. Uh, oh, yes, now then. Tell me, have you ever had to sing for your supper? No. Well, here's someone who did. Little Tommy Tucker sang for his supper. What did they give him? Brown bread and butter. How will he cut it without any knife? How will he marry without any wife?
Dave. <laughs> oh, let's sing it again, Jeffy. Let's sing it again. All right, then, Zippy. And if you do know little Tommy Tucker, why don't you join in with us? If you don't know the words, it doesn't matter. Just clap your hands. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. Little, little Tommy, Tommy Tucker, Tucker sang for his supper. What did they give him? Brown bread and butter. How will he cut it without any knife? How will he marry without any wife? <laughs> Jeffy, Jeffy, why was Tommy Tucker singing for his supper? Yeah, well, well, because he was hungry, of course. But, but why? Well, perhaps his father didn't have any money and couldn't buy any food. Oh, and I wonder why he didn't have a knife and, and why he wanted to get married. Oh, I don't know, George. Oh. I know. Oh, oh, do you, Bungle? Yes, I... No, I mean, let's dress up and pretend it, and then maybe we'll find out. Right. Oh, yes, that'll be good. Uh, and I'll be little Tommy Tucker, cos I'm the best singer. Oh, yes. twaddle chops to that, Zippy. Now, I'm gonna be... Um... Yes, and I know what I'm going to be. What's that, George? <laughs> no, I, I'm just working it out, Jeffy. <laughs> right, let's see what we can find in the dressing oh, up box. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be fun, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> Oh, hello. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm hungry. I'm very, very hungry. I am little Tommy Tucker, and I want my supper. Mm. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Here I am, my son, home again. Oh, hello, Daddy. Hello, little Tommy. Oh, I I'm glad you're back, cos I'm hungry. Have you got any food? Oh, don't talk to me about food, little Tommy. Everywhere I went, they said, Sorry, Mr Tucker, there's no work for you today. Oh. I'm sorry, you must go away. Oh. So I've got no food. I'm sorry, little Tommy. Oh, what are we going to do? Oh. What are we oh. going to I do? Oh, I know. I'll sing, Daddy. But how will that help, little Tommy? Oh, you'll see. You just cheer up, Daddy. Oh, oh look. Here comes Mr. Bread, the baker. Bread! Beautiful bread! Lovely, fresh baked bread! Oh, hello, Mr. Tucker. How's that lovely young son of yours, Tommy? <laughs> hello, Mr. Bread. Uh, say hello, Tommy. Uh, hello, Mr. Bread. Listen. Oh, I am very hungry, and Daddy's hungry too. We haven't got a thing to make a salad or a stew. If you will only feed us, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll sing this song short or long, especially for you. Well, why are you singing that song to me? It's so that you'll give us some bread, Mr. Mr. Bread, because you see, I am very hungry and Daddy's oh, hungry no, too. I don't need to sing anymore. Here you are, here's some bread. A, a nice big crusty one. Oh, oh, thank you, Mr. Bread. I say thank you, Tommy. Oh, yes, thank you. I'll sing it again if you like, especially for you. Oh, I am very hungry. Oh, no, no, don't <laughs> sing anymore, please. Here you are, a nice long French one. Oh, no, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> now we can eat, little Tommy. Oh, That'll yeah. go down a treat, won't it? Oh, yes, and thank, thank you, Mr. Tommy. Bread. Yeah. Oh, if only we had some butter to go with it. Yeah. But I'm a baker. I don't sell butter. You need a milkmaid to sell butter and milk and eggs. And... Milk, ooh, milk, ooh. Hey, who's that little Tommy? Oh, I am Mabel, the milkmaid. I sell fresh milk and best butter. Oh, hello, Miss Mabel. Mr. Tucker and his son, Tommy, want some butter for their bread. Where is the money? Oh, dear, we haven't got any money, have we, little Tommy? 
No money, no butter. Oh, no, but, but listen, listen, Miss Mabel. We've, We've got, got a, a nice big loaf of bread, bread and that should see us through. through. But it would taste much better if we had some butter too. If you give us some butter, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll sing this song short or long, especially for you. Second verse. When we have got a butter... No, please, please don't bother with the second verse, JP. I, I, I mean, Tommy. No, here's the butter. Please don't sing any more. Oh, thank you ever so much, Miss Mabel. Hey, look at this, little Tommy. Now we can eat. Well, you'll need a knife to cut my beautiful bread with. And spread my delicious butter. Uh, oh, yes. Have you got a knife, Daddy? Oh, I'm sorry, little Tommy. I no. had to sell all our knives to get some money. Oh, dear. What do we go Miss Mabel? Oh. Mr. Bread? Oh. Mr. Tucker? Hello, Tommy. Oh, 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 excuse me, please, Miss, Miss, uh, Miss, uh, Miss uh, Robottom. Robottom? Oh, please, it's Joe. Yes, I know, Joe, but we're acting Tommy Tucker. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, Miss Joe. Um, I would like to sing you a song. We have a little problem, a problem very true. We've got the bread and butter, but now what can we do? We need a knife to cut the bread and spread the butter too. Well, I happen to have two knives here, especially for you. <laughs> <laughs> here you are, Geoffrey. Now, be very careful because they're very sharp. Hey, look at that little Tommy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a knife to spread the butter and a knife to cut the cut bread. The bread yes, yes. Got something else in my basket. What? Look. Oh, what? oh, oh what? the what? rainbow book. Oh, yes. I was wondering, would you like a story Why are you eating your bread and butter? Oh, oh yes, please. Well, little Tommy and I would. <laughs> so, so would we, please. Oh, yes, please. Right. Now then, this is a story about a little monkey. It's called Monkey Business. <laughs> I just don't know what to do with Grizzletop, said Mama Monkey sadly to her eldest daughter, Paw Paw. He won't walk or talk, he won't climb, he won't find food for himself, and he won't keep, keep his fur clean. I'm worn out looking after all the babies and him as well. Grizzletop said, I'm not going to do those things my mum wants me to do. Paw Paw, his sister, sighed, and she thought hard about her brother. She knew he could take care of himself if he had to. It was just that he was a lazy monkey. We must do something about Grizzletop, said Paw Paw. Mm, yes. And she thought of a good and safe idea to stop Grizzletop from being lazy oh. and to work for what he wanted. Next morning, Grizzletop lay in bed waiting for his mother to come and wake him up. Nobody came. He tried shouting, I want my breakfast! But nobody came. Oh. In a temper, he rolled out of bed and cried, pretending he'd hurt himself. Still, nobody came. There was no father, no mother, no children, and no breakfast. Suddenly, he heard a wailing noise of a baby monkey. Oh, no, he squawked. They've left the babies, too. Grizzletop put his paws over his ears, but the baby's cries grew louder and louder until he couldn't stand it any more. He rushed to their nest and picked them up, but the babies went on yowling. Oh dear, he said, they haven't any food. They're hungry like me. Hmm, I must find some food for them. So with the babies clinging on to him, he leapt up into the nearest tree and set off to find some breakfast. Oh, good, good, good. It seemed a very long hunt, mm. but in the end he found some food for them all. After they had eaten their food, the little ones wanted to play, and he had to watch them carefully. Then they wanted a drink, oh. and then they rolled in the sand and needed a clean-up, oh. <laughs> and then they came for a cuddle, oh. and then they dropped off to sleep. At last, Grizzletop was able to sit down. He was completely worn out. As he closed his eyes, he heard rustling noises, and out of the trees and bushes came his brothers and sisters. When he saw their faces, he knew they'd played a trick on him by pretending not to be there. <laughs> but they were kind little monkeys, and Grizzletop had learned his lesson. So they crowded round him, hugging him and tiggling him and shouting, Well done, you can do it if you try. You're not lazy after all. You've worked very hard for the food, for the babies and yourselves.
<laughs> oh, did you like that? Thank you, Miss Jo. Would you like some more bread and butter? Oh, no, thank you. No. Hey, thank you, Mr. Bread. And thank you, Miss Mabel. And thank you, Miss Jo. <laughs> we did enjoy that bread and butter. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, it was delicious. And it was all because of my singing. I'm little Tommy Tucker. Hey, hey, I hey, sing hey, quite hey, 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 little Tommy. <laughs> Don't want to spoil that lovely little voice of yours, do we? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we want to hear a song from Rod, Jane and Freddy for a change. Oh, yes, yes please. please. <laughs> Little Tommy Tucker sings for his supper. What shall we give him? Brown bread and butter. How shall he cut it without hair a knife? How shall he be married without e'er a wife? Every single morning at breakfast time he sings Fried egg, sausage and beans Load up the train, take it away Do you see what I mean? If he keeps singing and we keep bringing it through nursery rhyme it says how will he marry without any wife yes it does bungle oh, oh yes if i had a wife everything would be all right who'd have him <laughs> i would tommy oh mabel yes and we can both look after my daddy can't we yes hey, as long as i've got my little tommy i shan't go far wrong Hey, he's a good lad, he's my little dummy. <laughs> well, I must be going. It's been lovely seeing you all again. I'm glad you liked the story. Bye-bye for bye 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 bye. <laughs> uh oh, You were ever so good as Mabel, George, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Zippy. And I thought I sang very well as little Tommy Tucker, but then again, I am a very good singer, yes. Well, job, Zippy. We only gave you the bread and the butter to stop you singing. Oh, no. oh come on, Bunny. <laughs> Let's spoil did. everything. Listen, we just got time to hear Zippy's funny little song again. It's time to go, I'm afraid, but we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye go on, Zippy, sing your funny song again. I'm a little Tommy Tucker. I sing quite beautifully. Poor I Tommy Tucker. Never mind. It's time for you to help us now with some music. Now, I want you to get your voices and your hands all ready to join in with some singing and some clapping. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head and shoulders, knees and toes. Head, 
Shoulders, and knees. Shoulders, and knees. Oh, what's next, Zippy? Yeah, there's a feet and feet and knees. No, no, look, well, look, look, look. As soon as Jeffrey gets here, we'll start our song. Yeah. What's that? Ooh. What, what is it, Bungo? Sounds like a cat to me. Well, it doesn't sound like a cat to me. Do, do, do you think it's Jeffrey? <laughs> of course it isn't. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Oh, Hello, Hello, Jeffrey. Hello, Jeffrey. <laughs> was that you? Oh, making that funny noise just now? Mm. Yes, I was gargling. Yes, I thought it was Jeffrey. Hmm. Well, what is gargling? Oh, I, I know, I know. It's when you get a tickle or, or a sore throat, isn't it? And you sort of well, wash your throat inside. Yeah. And have you got a, a tickly sore throat, Geoffrey? Yes, I have, Bungle. Oh. Can you sing? No, not today, Zippy. G you've got to. We've been waiting for you so that we can sing Hickory Dickory Dock. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Zippy. Listen, oh. I'll tell you what. I'll make some funny noises, if you like, if that would help. Mm. Well, what sort of noises? Well, if you all sing a song together, I'll show you what I mean. Oh. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'll sing because I'm the best singer. <laughs> no, you're not, <laughs> Zippy. Yes, you're I am. Oh, Hickory oh, Dickory Dock, the... Squeak. Oh, just like a little mouse, Geoffrey. Yes. Yeah, but listen, Bungle, listen. Ready, right. Hickory dickory dock, the squeak. Run up the... The... Struck. The squeak. Ran down. Hickory dickory dock. <laughs> oh, that's good. Let, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Right. All right. Bungle, do you want to join in with me this oh, time? Oh, yes, please. Right. right, here we go. Right. Hickory dickory dock. The squeak. Ran up the... The... Struck. The... Squeak. Ran down. Hickory dickory dock. <laughs> Can you make a noise like a horse, Geoffrey, when it's walking along? I think so. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I, I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> yes, like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go on, George. It's your turn. <laughs> I, I don't, don't think I can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, will you be able to sing with us again soon, Geoffrey? Uh, properly, I mean. Oh, yes, and the doctor gave me some medicine, so I should be all right quite soon. Oh. We, we've been thinking of lots of tunes we'd like to sing, haven't we, Bungle? Yes, we have. Well, listen, I can make you think of some more tunes, and without having to sing them. Oh. <laughs> How? I bet you can't. Oh, I bet you I can, Zippy. Now, you listen very carefully and see if you know what this tune is. Dickory dock. Yeah, <laughs> well done, oh, 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 do another one, do another one, Jeffrey. Right, listen carefully. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, can you do it again, please, Jeffrey? Right, I beat you that time, didn't I? Well, listen carefully. Oh, yes, 
Yes, is it ring a ring a roses? Yeah, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> ring a ring a roses, a pocket full of poses, a tissue, a tissue, we all fall down. <laughs> There's a story in the Rainbow Book about some people in a band. Did they clap out the tune like you, Geoffrey? Oh, no, Bungle. The story's called The Gingerbread Band, and this is how it goes. Tugby was a gingerbread man. He lived with his two friends, Tom and Albert. They had a large doll's house, which they'd been given, because everyone agreed they were much too nice to eat. Tugby had a trumpet. Albert had a banjo. Tom had a drum. When they all played together, Tugby said they sounded like a real band. One day, Albert rushed into the house. I've just heard it's Ellen's birthday, he said. Ella Mouse's birthday, said Tom. Oh, we must buy her a present. But we can't, said Albert. We spent all our money. Never mind, said Tugby. We can go and play a tune for her instead. Oh, yes, said the other two, dancing round with excitement. Down the road they marched, playing their music. When they arrived at Helen's house, they started to play Happy Birthday. The door opened and Helen looked out. Oh, what a wonderful surprise. Thank you very much, she said. Please, will you all come in and have a piece of my birthday cake? They went inside and each had a large slice of cake and a glass of milk. Then they played the tune again and Helen joined in on her flute. <laughs> must go now, said Tugby. Thank you very much for the tea. And off they went, playing their marching tune.
Oh, yes. My throat feels a lot better now. I think I can manage a song. La, 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 la. <laughs> oh, yes, much better, isn't it? Much better, Geoffrey. Yeah, thank you, Bungle. Come on, let's all sing a song together, shall we? <coughs> oh, dear. Sippy, what's the matter with you? Oh, 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 I think he's caught your tickly throat, Geoffrey. Oh, dear, Zippy. Oh, yes, you're going to have to have a gargle, aren't you? Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, I will. Yes. Well, I'm afraid it's time for us all to go now. But I'm sure Zippy will be better when we see you next time. Take care of yourself, won't you? Bye-bye. Goodbye. 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 If a centipede went to play on a cold and rainy day, he'd need 100 Wellington boots to keep him dry. Cos that's how many legs he's got. I've often wondered why. 100 legs would march along. He wouldn't mind the rain. One hundred legs would all be dry when he came home again. One hundred legs would march along. He wouldn't. Oh, I enjoyed all that singing. I thought you were very good too. Mind you, I don't think Zippy's the best singer. Do you? <laughs> Never mind. Well, it's time for me to go and see Bungle now, because we're going to the fun fair today. Oh, hello. We're waiting for Geoffrey. Yes, he's been to the fun fair and I can't wait to hear all about it. <laughs> you can't wait to hear about what, George? The fun fair, Geoffrey. He's getting so excited. <laughs> oh, oh, Geoffrey, what, what's that? That's a coconut, Zippy. I won this at the fair. Oh, oh. oh what a funny thing. It's all hard and... And all hairy. Yeah. Look, Zippy. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. <laughs> Jeffy, Jeffy, will you tell us all about the fun fair, please? Of course I will, George. Would you like to hear about it? Well, first of all, I went to visit Madame Pat, the fortune teller. What's a fortune teller, Geoffrey? Well, George, a fortune teller is somebody who thinks they can tell you about things that are going to happen to you. <laughs> oh, I don't believe in all that, Geoffrey. <laughs> what, what, what happened next? Well, let's see, shall we? Whilst I was there, I met Steve and Luke. They wanted to go on the big wheel. I held on to the bar, lads. Once we were safely fastened into our seat, the big wheel carried us up and up, high into the air, round and round and down again. It was really quite fast and very exciting. Steve and I decided to have a ride on the Dodgem cars. You had to be very careful getting in there. Right, let's put your belt on. Arm through. There you are. And you won't bump your head on the steering wheel. Right, off we go then. Next, we tried the hoopla. The idea is to throw a hoop over a goldfish bowl that's on the table. And if you do, you win a prize. Luke and Steve wanted to win a goldfish, but it's really very difficult. And although Luke tried very hard, he didn't win anything. 
Well, by this time, we were getting very hungry. So we bought some candy floss. It's a lovely, sticky, fluffy sweet made in a special machine. Thank you. Hey, yeah, Stephen. Thanks. Well, can I have four toffee apples as well, please? I'll take them back to Bungle Zippy and George. There you go. Thank you. All right, nice girl then. Come on. Do we have three goes, please? Three more for you. Three more for you. Got it? There you are. There's your three. Three for you. Before I came home, I tried to win a coconut by knocking some cans off a shelf. What a coconut! Oh, very good. Why are you frightened on the big wheel here? Oh, who's that? Oh, come in. That'll be Madame Pat, the fortune teller. Oh. She wants to talk to George. Ooh. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Madame Pat. Have you come to tell my fortune? No, no, I haven't. But I have come to see you, and I'll tell you why later. But first, I've got a story to read to you all. Oh, yes, yes. right. Here Could we I are. Can I have the book, Geoffrey? Hey, on, man. Lovely. Pat. Thank you. Now, here we go. Now, it's called A Big Surprise for Bertie. Bertie the goldfish lived in a round glass bowl. All around his bowl, there were other glass bowls, each with its own goldfish. They were the prizes on the hoopla stall at the fun fair. People would try and throw hoops over the bowls, and if they were lucky, they would win a goldfish to take home with them. Every day, Bertie swam round and round in his bowl, looking out at the fun fair, and hoping that today would be the day when someone would win him. He knew that he looked different from all the other goldfish, with his strange black markings, and because of this, no one seemed to want him. And as the days went by, Bertie grew sad and lonely in his glass bowl, and he'd quite given up hope of ever being one, when suddenly, to his great surprise, a hoop clattered down around his bowl. Oh, and this made Bertie so happy that he actually jumped right out of the water and then landed back in again with a great big splash. <laughs> and now, because no one had ever wanted Bertie before, he thought the little boy had made a mistake. Oh, but he needn't have worried. He hadn't. The very next morning, the little boy carried Bertie's bowl into the sitting room and carefully tipped him into a lovely big fish tank. Oh, it was a very different world from his glass bowl. There were all sorts of stones and water plants for him to explore, and there was lots of space. But the best surprise of all was still to come. Bertie just couldn't believe his eyes, for there in front of him was another goldfish. And not just any goldfish, but one that looked just like him, with the same black markings. So now Bertie had someone to share his wonderful home. Oh, oh thank you, Madam Pat. Well, well, what did you want to see me about, Madam Pat? Ah, I brought you a little present, George. A <gasps> present? Now, there we are. Oh, oh, oh thank you, Madam Pat. Look, look, Jeffy, look, look, a snowstorm. Yes, well... I have to go now, but you just keep looking into that snowstorm, George. Oh, Thank you. Uh, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Bye, Bye. 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 <laughs> it's boring. I mean, all I can see is snow. So can I. Well, I think it's very pretty. Lots of snow. Look, Jeffy. Lots and lots and lots of... Who? Oh, oh, oh. Well, Jeffrey, look what I can see. Look! What can you see? I can see a roundabout. Oh, what a 
such a lovely present. It's a magic present. Oh, thank you, Madam Pat, wherever you are. What can you see in my snowstorm bungle? Uh, well, nothing yet. Keep looking. Oh, yes. I can see Jane Rod and Freddy. Roll up. Come on, everyone, a coconut. Roll up. Roll up. I am the man on the coconut shop. Only ten pennies, so give it a drop. Lovely fresh coconuts here in my stall. Give me your money, I'll give you a ball. Come on, Sippy, you can do better than that. So sweet and sticky, there's nothing to bite. Apples on sticks are much better to eat. But you can't beat a candy floss just for a treat. Come to the fun fair, there's so much to do. Swing boats and dodgems are waiting for you. Ghost trains that take you right on. Right, hold on tight, everybody. The roundabout's just about to start. <laughs> up, down. And up and down and round and round and round. Oh, 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 stop, stop. I, I, I feel, feel dizzy. I, I'm going to lie down for a minute. Yes. I, I won't be long. <laughs> oh, 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 my poor head. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy yours feeling dizzy on a roundabout. <laughs> oh. Uh, Geoffrey, uh, can we make a pretend coconut, shy? Yes, all right, Zippy. Oh, I know. Look, we can use these empty paper cups. Oh, oh yes. Those can be our coconuts, can't they? Yes. We can turn them upside down. One, One two, two, three, three four, five. 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 Now we've got some paper, don't we? Some old newspaper. We scrunch it up into a ball. Yes. There you are. And we can throw it at the paper cup coconuts. <laughs> Careful, bugger, you nearly hit me. Oh, let me have a go, let me have a go. Yeah. Right, right. right. Oh. <laughs> I knocked what I hit one, Jeffrey. There you are, sir, your prize, one hairy coconut. Oh, thank you, but I've won a real one. Look, <laughs> it's really the one Jeffrey won, yeah. <laughs> hello, hello, is there anyone there? <gasps> hello, Jeffrey, I am Madame George, the fortune teller, and I've come to tell you, to tell you, to tell you... 
It's time to say goodbye to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right, Madam George. It is time to say goodbye. But take care, won't you? And enjoy yourself when you go to the fun fair. See you. Bye-bye. Hey, goodbye. Bye. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching all our rainbow shows. I'm afraid it's time for us all to go now. But take care of yourself, won't you? We'll see you again really soon. Bye.